This is Justin with Sportsbook Review. Welcome to this edition of In Justin's Mailbox. First question this week from Nair5680. He writes, I wanted to get your opinion on Kelly betting. I am a fairly successful capper, but very conservative. I have left money on the table. Uh, because of it, do you recommend Kelly betting? Kelly betting is a dangerous landmine. The most important thing before you even consider doing Kelly betting is you have to answer one question very well. Do you know your edge? If you've been doing this less than you know, three years successfully, you probably have no clue what your edge is. You might, and if you do, then you can use Kelly betting. For most people, I would recommend you never use Kelly betting until your mathematics is at the point where you can not just say what your edge is, but you know, to what confidence interval you believe you have that edge. Uh, for everyone else, I'd recommend using flat betting, probably 1% a unit. The second question I have is from PIG. I'm not quite sure how you say his name, uh, about using a Poisson distribution on pitcher strikeouts. And he writes, after analyzing approximately how many innings a pitcher will go per start and figuring out how many strikeouts and walks they are projected to throw in a given start and then normalizing for their opponent, I use team stats versus the league, um, I come up with a number. Once I have the number, I've been using a Poisson calculator to value the prop. Is this a reasonable use of the, of the Poisson distribution? Uh, the two requirements for using a Poisson distribution, particularly for props, is that you have a large number of possible occurrences. In this case, at-bats is the number of occurrences. Ideally, you want this to be about 100. Uh, Poisson distribution will work reasonably well, though, even with only 30, like 30 at-bats. Uh, the second thing requirement is that the occurring event, in this case a strikeout, you generally want it to be less than about 10%. Uh, if a strikeout is happening every third time, uh, it's not Poisson is not great. It's okay, and you'll get okay results. You might be better off using a binomial distribution with this. One other comment for PIG, I'd add. If you're using a team's year-to-date performance to estimate how many strikeouts that team will allow, you need to be very careful that the roster is not changing. Because if, you, if the roster changes to the point where your lineup is either having significantly more or significantly less strikeouts based on one or two key players changing, this approach could bury you. The next question is from Rio De Niro, and he writes, I have a question. If you had an opportunity to get down all correlated parlays in NCAA football, would you bet both sides, favor and over, and dog and under in the same game in a heavily correlated situation? That's a good question. Uh, mathematically, I would bet both sides of any correlated parlay that was profitable. A bigger concern you have, though, is how long can I do this before the book throws me out? If you're betting both sides of the same correlated parlay, your whatever book you're using is much more likely to pay attention and toss you. So I would say yes, bet as much as you can on these, uh, both sides, with the caveat that I try to spread it around so it's not obvious what you're doing. Rio further asks, uh, how heavy should the correlation be to pull the trigger blindly? Thank you in advance for your time. Uh, quick rule, correlated parlays in college football when you're betting the whole game, 2.3. If you multiply this spread times 2.3 and it's less than the total, uh, that's going to be blindly profitable. Jeff writes, I have a question. When Pinnacle lists daily football, parentheses, soccer games in any league, sometimes one game is offline. Can you tell me what the major reasons why Pinnacle marks a game offline? And you'll frequently see this not just in soccer, but in all the sports. Sometimes a game will go down basically for no reason at all. There's a couple reasons this will happen. One, if you have a substantial either injury or lineup change you know if you have well obviously if you have a pitcher change the whole odds are going to change but anytime a new entry comes out a lot of times the whole board will start moving when all the books are getting bet many books will take it offline that is let no one bet it until the line stabilizes they'll look see think get their composure and then put a new line up uh, so the time that you're looking is the time when they're reevaluating Another time you may see, uh, a lot of books may take games offline, is when you have steam going on. An example of this would be you know, Dr. Bob on Thursdays, when he releases his college plays and suddenly the whole board is getting smashed. Books may take it off during the betting. Some may even take it off before the betting begins. A third time you may see, uh, Pinnacle in particular, take uh, games offline, is when somebody that they're intimidated by is placing a, a limit bet. So, you know, they have certain players flagged, especially in smaller sports. If, you're, if you beat the hell out of them in a smaller sport and you put in a, a limit bet, they may take the game offline and move it based just on your action. 
and they may do it even if it's not a limit bet. Jill Opiafra writes, I had a two-team six-point teaser in the NFL that was refunded instead of graded as a loss. What happened here? The teaser he bet, he lists New England teased down to minus five, which lost when they won, would beat Buffalo by exactly one point. And he had San Diego minus four, which pushed. Now, this brings up a key point that you need to look at when you're looking at a book to play teasers, and that is what rules do they use? The standard Las Vegas rules for teasers are that if you have a push on a leg of a teaser, the number of teasers reduces. And if it reduces to one, the bet is void regardless of what happens to the, the other leg. So in his case, Jello Biafra, his San Diego leg pushed. This two-team teaser then gets reduced to a one-team teaser. There's no payoff chart for a one-team teaser, and it's only fair to refund it because he's now at a chance where the one remaining leg could lose, but it can't win. So Las Vegas rules say you, know, you can't have a bet that you can lose but can't win. So in this case, the bet is refunded. Now, a lot of books in the offshore do not follow the Las Vegas rules. They have their own rule, which says any loss in a two-leg bet is a loss. Uh, so read the rules carefully. In this case, Jello Biafra played at Bet Jamaica, which is a, a fine book. And as a result, you know, he's better off because he played with favorable rules. That's all for this week. If you have any questions, feel free to send them to Justin at Sportsbook Review, and I'll do my best to answer them. Realize anything you send to me that does not relate to a sportsbook dispute, I reserve the right to put on one of my videos.